Welcome, people of planet Earth and all planets beyond. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Josh. Today, I'm going to teach you how to identify whether or not your Levi's are vintage by looking at the back of the care tag. So let's get into it. Now, before we get into the video, I want to introduce you to this video's sponsor, WeBuyOldJeans.com. If you have old vintage denim that you would like to sell, get a free appraisal, or just find out more information about, this is the place to go. They have competitive pricing, a very knowledgeable staff, and are absolutely fantastic to work with. They're good friends of ours, and we appreciate their support. So go check out WeBuyOldJeans.com today. So there are many, many ways to identify the age of your lead. There's lots of different methods, but none is as accurate or precise as using the care tag. And that's because there is a date code on the back of the care tag, and I'm going to teach you how to find it. Now, unfortunately, the care tag has only been in use for about 50 years or so. So it can only tell us about 50 years worth of uh, date ranges. Uh, for anything older, you'll have to look for other methods uh, that you can find in our playlist above. Now, a quick note before we get too deep into this, all of these rules or guidelines have exceptions and can be a little bit fuzzy. Dates can be a little bit uh, blurred because transitions happened over time, not necessarily overnight. So just remember that when you are examining your own garments and comparing them to these guidelines. And the first thing you need to know about reading the care tags is what era your care tag is from. And that's because these care tags uh, change their format over time. Uh, so you wanna be aware of what care tag you're looking at and what format it is so that you can read it correctly. All right, so quickly, let's go through the Levi's care tag history. And so you can know uh, what tag is from what era. The first era to look at is the stamp era. This was from 72 to 74. Uh, this was just simply a stamp of the wash instructions on the pocket bag of the jeans. Then we had the little unbranded rectangle uh, tag that ran from 74 all the way to 1986 at the latest. Then from 1984, 85 until 1987, we had some transition tags that also were being used. Here are some examples of those. They are all unbranded and they do have some variability and some of those we'll talk about later. Then in 1987, we see the branded care tag introduced in the red bat wing care tag. There was also a black bat wing care tag that was also introduced around the same time. And this one lasted all the way from 1987 to the early 2000s. And then in the middle of the 90s, around 1993, we saw the 501 get a new unique care tag that looks just like this. This one lasted about 10 years from 1993 to the early 2000s as well. After the early 2000s, we saw a new tag that was also unbranded like previous. And eventually we're now seeing with Levi's multiple care tags on their garments. So if you see a Levi's garment with multiple care tags, like a little booklet, like you see in this example, you can know that these are more modern jeans. Now let's talk about what information is actually contained on the tag. Outside of the obvious wash instructions, there are uh, size, uh, of the garment, then there is a bunch of information that was probably used for uh, quality standards and stuff. But there's also other information like the lot number, uh, the material code, uh, the factory code, and what's most important to us, the date code. But we got to look at some of these other codes and numbers in order to eliminate them out of contention because some of these uh, numbers can sort of jumble up and bunch together and it can be kind of confusing. The first and most obvious code we want to examine is the lot number. This is the style of the gene. You are probably most familiar with 501s, 505s, maybe 646s. These are all lot numbers that you will see on the back of a gene. And they're most often attached with a dash to the material code. And the material code might read something like 0217, which was the standard code for pre-shrunk 100% cotton jeans. But there are a variety of other material codes over the years, uh, and there does not appear to be a definitive list of what each one means. Sometimes the lot number may also include two other numbers prior to the three digit lot number like seven zero or two zero. This was sort of a thing that happened 
uh, at d different periods of time in Levi's history, uh, but you can largely ignore it if you can recognize what the lot number is. The next code and a fairly important code is the factory code. We need to find this factory code so that we can eliminate it as a possibility for the date code. And what's really helpful about the factory code is that it's also stamped on the back of the top button of your Levi's pants. So you can go to the back of the top button, find whatever number is stamped on the back of that button, go back to your uh, wash instructions and see if you can find that number. If you found that number, you can know that that three digit or one digit or uh, two digit or even four digit number is the factory code and not the date code. And figuring out where this factory code is is also helpful because the date code is most commonly adjacent to the factory code. Seeing an example, here we have this uh, small unbranded rectangular uh, wash instructions. And you can see we have two numbers and then we have the number 39. In this case, 39 is to the right of the date code. You can also see that there is a material code and a lot number. Now that we have identified the lot number, material number, the factory code, and we know that the uh, date code is a, typically adjacent to the factory code, we can surmise that the two numbers, the nine and the six, are the date code. Now let's talk about how these date codes are formatted. Often this is a very confusing part of dating your jeans because this format seems to sort of change, it's not super consistent, and can be a bit confusing. But first, the most guiding principle we are going to talk about is what this date code is telling us. And this date code is designed to tell us the month and the year of production. If you can remember that, uh, anytime you look at any of those numbers in the back of the date code, you can use that to process whether or not the number you're looking at actually gives you a, a reasonable year of production, a month and a year of production, or if it becomes nonsensical. If it's 25-1, that is a nonsensical date for what we're looking at, and you can throw it out. But most of these cases will be pretty obvious. There are three main formats or ways that these numbers are written a two-digit code, a three-digit code, and a four-digit code. We'll look at the earlier versions and look at the later versions. Each one of these formats is generally associated with a an era of the Levi's care tag, so that can be helpful as well. Now let's take a look at the two-digit and three-digit codes. These are considered some of the earliest versions of the date code and are often used sort of interchangeably, though some uh, formats are more common in certain decades. Uh, both of these formats were used at the same time, so you just have to be aware of what you're looking at. Let's take a look at a stamped version of the care, uh, Levi's Care Instructions. Here we have an example here. I'll go ahead and let you know that the factory code in this case is the number four, which you can find in the back of the button. Uh, but so you can see just to the left of it, we have a three-digit date code, 12-2. Now, if you remember correctly, uh, we talked about this stamp uh, care tag being only used during 1972 to 1974 or so. So this is clearly going to give us a date within that range. Now, if you were to look at this 12-2, what do you think it means? It's pretty obvious. December of 1972. The first two digits are the month because months can come in two digits. And the last digit is the last digit of the year of production. Remember that. The first two digits are going to be the month and the last digit will be the last digit of the year of production. Now this is pretty straightforward, but you'll also realize if you have a pair of jeans that is produced in let's say September, like these jeans here, they will not have a second digit. So since you're only getting the last digit of the year of production and the, di the one digit for the month, this three digit code becomes a two digit code. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. So here we have nine, six, 39. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you is the factory code that can also be found on the back of the button again. Uh, so we look to the left here and we see that it has nine, six. This is telling us this is this pair of jeans was produced in September of 1976. Now you'll probably remember that the era of this particular rectangular tag lasted all the way to 1986. So how do we know that this is telling us 1986 versus 1976? Well, there are a variety of reasons, but the primary reason that this one is telling us this is 1976 is because of the factory code. 
uh, in approximately 1981, uh, the factory codes basically became standardized as three digit codes. And before that, we had one digit codes and two digit codes and occasionally a three digit code. So you can be fairly confident that if it has a two digit code on one of these rectangular care tags that you're looking at a gene prior to the early 80s. You will find that this, if you found this exact uh, date code on a pair from 1986 on this same rectangular tag, it would most likely have a three digit code, most commonly 575, because they seem to have used that particular tag for longer. Now let's take a look at a transition tag uh, from the mid eighties into like 1987 or so, as the transition to the branded tag was beginning. This particular tag right here throws a lot of people off because it's a little bit confusing and I understand completely why, because sometimes it throws me off. Uh, but this was a transition er uh, era tag that still has all the same information and uses the three digit code that we see down here at the bottom right corner. This date code is 107. And how do I know that that is the date code? Well, first of all, you can see the factory code 575. That is clear that that is the factory code because we can uh, check that on the back of the button. Also, we can identify the lot number and material number and write those off as well. Um, but the 107 actually makes sense. This tag was used during that era and it actually gives us a sensical date. It gives us October of 1987. Now, before we get out of the transition period in the mid eighties, I want to mention one other tag and it's this one right here. This one was used very briefly uh, and not for a lot of pairs of jeans, but it's very confusing. And that's because a lot of the information we've been talking about is found along the edges of this tag. You will be able to find the same information. It just is gonna look a little bit different and may require a little bit more testing. Furthermore, we go into the 90s, where in about 92, 93, we start seeing a four digit code. And Levi's kind of began really standardizing this. I think they actually took a page out of Levi's Europe and made this four digit code the standard. So no longer did we have codes that could be two digits or three digits because of the variable of the month. We have zero nine or zero two if we're looking at a month with only one digit in its number. So take a look at this example here. We have 0793. We know that's the date code because it gives us a sensical date and it's also adjacent to the factory code to the left. But here, 07, 1993, that is July of 1993. This one is very simple. What they started doing is just adding that zero onto the single digit before that, and it became a standardized four digit code. So from this point on, it's pretty simple. You will look at this and you will find uh, that reading this date code, which is generally found right there to the right of the factory code, is going to be pretty simple when it gets to the 90s. In the 90s, the 501 got a little bit of a different treatment and got a different tag, but it can be read just the same. You can look at an example here. You can see the factory code to the left, 524, and the date code right there in the middle, 1096, giving us October 1996. Now, an important variable that happened later on in the late 2000s, early 2000s, teens, uh, it appears is that Levi's took that four same digit factory code and instead of it meaning the month and the year, it transitioned to the week of the year and the year of production. So you might see 4017 giving us the 40th week of 2017. This was a page out of the European Levi's uh, date code, which uh, was also in the same format, even into the early nineties. That is how you read Levi's care tags. I understand it can be confusing because there's a lot of numbers back there. So just be aware that your date code needs to make sense and it needs to match up with the era of the tag that it is on. So I hope this was helpful and I hope you learned something. Uh, if you have questions, leave them in the comments below. And if I have some time, I would love to answer those questions. If you want to learn more about Levi's, you can check our playlist all about how to date vintage clothing. And hopefully that will be a resource to you. Thank you to our sponsor, webuyoldjeans.com. Check them out if you're looking to sell any jeans. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.